Welcome, so glad for those of you joining us, for those watching the replay, thank you for being here. I want to let you know we've got a podcast that has now gone live, so check out our podcast, um, find it, everything that we're saying here we're going to be putting onto the podcast so that you can get access to what we're talking about and listen to it if you don't get a chance to hear it all or watch it all. It's going to be an audio on the podcast, make sure and tune in for that. We also have a book called Heart Shaped Parenting, and everything we talk about is based on that book. There is so much more in this book than what we're saying on Facebook Live. So make sure you get that book as well. You can go over to heartshapedministries.com to get a copy of that book. You can also get it on Amazon. So get it there if you want. If that's easier, um, by all means, you can do it, get it and read it through. <laughs> We're working on an audio version of that. So hopefully you're going to get it on Audible soon. In the meantime, tune into the book and, and, uh, and uh, sorry, our podcast and read the book. So all of that is happening now. So this is the cliche. All you need is love. Is that true? All you need is love. What would you say? Is it true? Now I know what you're thinking. No, we don't just need love because you're thinking we need love and discipline. You know, this is a parenting talk. <laughs> Those are the two things that come up all the time, love and discipline. But we're not talking about discipline. No, you actually do need more than love, and we don't mean discipline. We're going to tell you in a moment what we mean, so stay tuned for that. We're going to unpack what else you need besides love, not talking about discipline. Let me tell you what happened whenever we first um, start. Please start typing, by the way. If you're here, give us some thumbs up. Let us see who's on. We'd love just to welcome you and uh, make sure that we um, can engage with you. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Thank you for being hey, there, Nikki. Nikki. Oh, he's, ah, good. Nikki, hi, guys. Thank you so much. Glad you're there. So great to see you here, by the way. I don't think we've seen you in a long time. Nikki, just put your face up there. Wow. <laughs> Nikki, of course, we knew you before you got married, and so, so glad you're here. Thank you so much. Anyone else um, here, uh, please do say hi. We'd love to engage and we're going to ask you some questions to make this interactive, <clears throat> so please do. I want to tell you, though, what happened to us when, when we moved to England. We were there for six years, and we worked on a ministry with the poor, one of the best in England. Hello, Janice. Thanks for joining us again. So glad that you are here as well. And in this ministry with the poor, it's one of the best in England. It's called the King's Arms Project. Look it up if you want to learn how to work with the poor, especially in a European context. They are fantastic. We absolutely love them. That, that ministry has just grown. King's Arms Project, give a shout out to them. And yeah, we learned a lot. We love them. We learned so much about <laughs> ministering with the poor. Then we moved to South Africa. And we realize that the poor, it's a little bit more complicated and you have long-term poverty and then you have social issues and there's so much happening with the poor. We got a hold of a book called When Helping Hurts, a great book by a, few, a couple of Canadian guys. And one thing that we learned from that book is that you have kind of crisis moments of poor. So let's say a tornado comes through and just wipes out an entire city all of a sudden, those people are made destitute, they're poor. You need to go in in that crisis situation and you put money towards it. You, you put uh, food and clothing and you start helping in a crisis mode. Well, a lot of people treat long-term poverty issues like a crisis mode. So you're feeding people every single day with sandwiches. And what happens is they get in a dependency and you're treating a long-term thing like it's a crisis mode. So you're trying to fix an outward situation that actually needs to be dealt with from the end, from a developmental look. So if you think about it for a, from a long-term perspective, you're going to go in, you're going to incarnate yourself with the poor, you're going to help um, in other means, you're going to start thinking about sustainability, you're going to start shaping from the inside out that community from the inside out, not just working on the outside. So there are different poverty situations that require different uh, outlooks and different ways to help well it's the same with the parent with parenting as well yes it is and just want to say hi to megan hockey megan hockey hey, Meg. hello megan so glad you are here <laughs> megan and roy <clears throat> so yes with parenting guys you know it can be so easy to treat parenting like something we are 
just trying to put out fires. Sometimes we feel like that anyways, that every day we're just trying to put out these fires. We're just trying to survive. We kind of go from crisis mode to crisis mode and trying to sometimes just put in some quick fixes that'll just help us get through that moment. And actually parenting is a long-term developmental process. So yeah. parenting is we are in it for the long haul and we are in it to shape our children's hearts for the long term as well. And if we have this view of it, it will it will it will change incredibly how we parent day to day. Because if we're in something for the long haul, we actually respond differently, we treat it differently than if we're just in it for the crisis moment. So give us, an, give us an example, a little bit of spontaneity here. Oh, so okay. gi give us an example, Megan, of a kind of a crisis situation and you can easily treat it, you know, like it's a disaster zone when actually it's a <laughs> long-term uh, developmental thing that needs to happen. And how do we, well, how would we treat, how would we handle those two? What do parents normally do that's different? <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Just saying a quick hi to Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Um, Sarah Campbell. So so I think it can be really in anything. I mean, you think about, so we have a toddler and we've got four teenagers. And I think, you know, sometimes there, if there's explosions in the home or even KO breaks something, we can just quickly, or, or he's too, whatever it is, he's throwing a tantrum or he's too noisy. We can just quickly shut it down or deal with it by responding harshly or whatever it is, instead of taking the time to actually teach him through it or to put in some processes that will help him understand why or why not. So say he's speaking harshly to his brothers or sisters, we can just say, stop it, you know, stop speaking like that and then carry on um, or be quiet, you know, whatever it is. Or we can use it as a teaching opportunity that actually when we're in this right now with our toddler, that people are precious, that God has made them incredibly precious and we speak kindly to them. We treat them with respect and honor and we do that over and over again. And our hope then is we're planting these seeds that in the long term, he is gonna grow up with the truth that people are precious, that people are worth treating with respect and honor and I need to speak kindly to them. So yeah. that's just an example of dealing with Situations. Shout out to Ryan Matthews. This is an amazing pastor, leader, and uh, he has four, four children. And Ryan, you know what we mean whenever, you know, parenting is a difficult thing. And in a situation where your children are uh, screaming or needing their way, it's so easy to just kind of fix a situation with, uh, you know, throwing money at it. I know I, I, I know that whenever, um, you know, some of the situations that I've seen, it's kind of like, you know, be quiet, here's some money, go to the mall, you know, enjoy yourself, <laughs> especially the older kids just or, or just, just sit go. down and here, I'll put on your favorite show, just watch the show. And we, we try and uh, deal with and modify the situation so that the behavior can change. And we forget that we actually, it t it's going to take a little bit more, a developmental mindset to actually take the moment to take it someplace else. So we need more than just, we love you and we love our peace and quiet. So just, you know, you know, be okay for right now and <laughs> yes. do whatever it takes to be okay. We need something else besides that. So if you remember last week, we were speaking about the five lies that your child believes yeah. or will be tempted to believe. And we spoke about creating environments in our home that combat those lies. And one of the lies we spoke about was the lie of being unwanted. So the environment we want to create in our homes, if we want to combat that lie in our child's hearts, is yeah. we need an environment of unconditional love. Now, in our book and in our courses, we go into a lot more detail on how to create an environment like that in your home. But the thing we want to focus on tonight is creating an environment of unconditional love and what your children need in this is time. There it is. So love looks like time. Love for the long term, it looks like time. Yeah. And we're going to expound a little bit on what that means. But time for us is one of our most precious commodities. And it is something that as parents and as we're in this stage of life, we can often feel like it is the very thing that we actually do not have. Yeah. It is really difficult to give time. And yet that is the very thing that our children need. Yeah. And so it would be great. We'd love to hear a little bit from you guys. We'd love to interact with you some. 
Hello, Bridge. Sorry. Uh, yeah, Bridge. And Mundo and Devi. Sorry, we haven't said yeah, hi to you here's guys a yet. Great, here's a great comment here. Our love as parents is often overpowered by the need to protect our children. However, being conscious of our actions helps us balance the expression of our love so our children don't miss out on or ever question it. Wonderful. There was some great wisdom in there. I think we need to get you as, as a guest on the show. <laughs> the guest speakers, um, really. But it's so true. We want to protect our children as well. And so we, we tend to think of protection as, as kind of uh, dealing with that moment as opposed to long-term yeah. helping them think through. And it takes time. Time is, like Megan said, the thing that we often don't have. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. What are some of the things mm -hmm. that keep you from being able to give the time to your children that they need? What are some of the things that parents are struggling with that maybe you're struggling with that keep time under pressure and keep us from being able to give it to the very ones that need it? We're going to let uh, one of the, uh, the answers to that give it to you right now. Let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> with a John Ortberg quote. Megan, you want to read that yes. John Ortberg quote? Yes, I actually love, I love this quote. It always challenges me. But he says, love and hurry are fundamentally incompatible. Love always takes time. And time is the one thing that hurried people do not have. I find that so challenging. Yeah. I'm just going to say the beginning again. Love and hurry are fundamentally incompatible. They actually cannot go together because love takes time. We have to have time. If we feel like we do not have time, something needs to change in our lifestyle, in our responses, so that we make time for our children. Yeah. I mean, for me, one of the things that keep me from giving time to, to my children needing it is, is this idea that I've got to produce so much during the day. I've got to produce and I've got to, I've got to, you know, I've got to be... Uh, fruitful with my day and fruitful looks like creating something and moving it, getting it done. And my children sometimes come in and they get in the way of the plan that I had to be really fruitful that day. And mm -hmm. so this need inside of me to produce, and it's probably driven by that lie that we talked about last week, this de desire to be significant and this idea that if I create something, I can, I can be really significant if I, and, and so, and I have to be yeah. careful. I don't, let that dominate my life to, in such a degree to such a degree that producing something in the day is more important than my children. So when they come, they need me, or even on a weekend, it spills into that, and I'm being driven by this this mm -hmm. desire to produce, the desire to be significant. My children are paying the cost for that. I'm not giving them the time. That's some of my own mm -hmm. personal config, uh, um, confession there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Gail Schreiner. Oh, love your ministry. I thank you. I actually thought you were saying that <laughs> when you love your Hi, ministry Gail. more than your children. <laughs> <laughs> you should watch that. You should as well. definitely watch it. If you that. love your ministry more than your children, <laughs> then it's going to squeeze out time that your children often need. But thank you so much for that encouragement, Gail. Um, we love all that you do as well. We know Gail for many years now. Africa Cares for Life and Pregnancy Crisis Center. Um, down in Amanzam Toti, such good work. Yeah, um, good to see you. Yeah, Nomfundo, you're right. Um, so need true. To slow down. S hurry is the thing. I don't know if, if anybody else had anything you wanted to contribute to that. Hurry is what we've mm -hmm. identified so far. We've also identified this d this kind of almost need to produce in you, um, and it can come from uh, issues that you've got. Adam. Um, yeah, great to see you. Thank you so much, Adam. Oh my goodness. Oh, wow. yeah, great. Adam, it has been a long <laughs> time. For our friend from the UK did some training with Adam as well. It's great to see you on here. So maybe as we go, you can just be thinking, what are things in your life? What are things in the life of your parenting with your children, with your family that hold you back from giving time? Mm. Because time is what time is what they need. So yeah. think about this. Um, as we go, we're going to have some more time at the end for question and answer and interaction, but we'd love to hear from you guys as well. What, what holds you? Jenna says, I find myself so uh, busy, I think it says, with our housework and with mm. three kids, our supper busy, it's hard to give each of them time that they deserve. We're going to give you a little tip on how to do that in just a moment, so stay tuned, but yeah, thank you so much good. for that contribution. One of the things that you're going to need to do with your time 
It's not just the quantity of time that your children need. It's going to be the quality of time that they need from you. You have to learn to be fully present with your children when you are with them, when you are giving time. This is a huge challenge in our day and age. Mm -hmm. The ability to stop and focus is a genuine struggle that we have, especially with all the devices that we now have, the stresses that we have that added to that, COVID-19 added to that. Mm -hmm. Lockdown has got many of us into bad habits of just being on our phone constantly and, and keeping up with the news. And we're at home, so our children just, they can identify, you know, mom and dad are just always on the phone. They don't want to be with me. They would rather be with their device. This thing is dangerous. In fact, in our book, Heart Shaped Parenting, that so much of what we're saying comes from, I actually touch on this being fully present. And there's a survey that we came across that was so shocking to us. This is unbelievable stats. I mean, listen to this. You know, uh, uh, people, t they tap swipe and click an average of 2,617 times per day. Now, I can imagine in the lockdown, that has just Even skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. um, but now you compare that with how often people smile. On average, adults smile 20 times per day. So in other words, we are swiping 13,000% more than we are smiling. So that, if you put that in other terms, we're uh, that's one smile per 130 swipes. Now you can imagine you've got your, your phone here with you and your child's next to you and you're just swiping, clicking, swiping, clicking. You're, you're doing that 130 times before you actually even look up to smile at your child. That's, that's effectively mm -hmm. what we're talking about. That's a scary statistic. This thing is a dangerous thing for parents that really want to be fully present with their children. But your children desperately need you to be able to be fully present. That's what time, giving time to your children looks like. That's how they, uh, qual or sorry, um, that's the characteristic of love. That's what they see love as, this kind of fully present time spent with them. Turn off your phones. It's not just enough for you to be physically present with them. Yeah, it's good. And another thing in terms of loving them with time is to be available. And being available just means being willing to make the most of every moment with your children. Yes. And that's being willing to connect deeply with them. So to take advantage of those moments, even when it's at an inconvenient time. So we have noticed this even more with teenagers, I would say. Yeah. Hey, as our kids have grown, that we'll, you know, in your busy life, we'll set aside a date to be with them or we'll set aside yeah. time with them. And then they don't actually want, really connect, want to connect at that time. Yeah. And I find that they often want to connect sometimes when it's most inconvenient for us, when we're in the middle of busyness or we're trying to get kids to bed so we can finish all the work that we need to do. But I find with teenagers, when you know there is an invitation for connection or heart connection, we have to take that moment. Because as teenagers, if those moments are kind of refused or brushed aside too often, then quickly those opportunities will stop coming. So being available means that we are actually ready. We're ready to sacrifice yeah. whatever it is, whether that's housework and all of that needs to be done or whether that's even job stuff, you need to get back online, whatever you're doing, to, to take advantage of a moment where we can connect yeah, with their very hearts. Very good. You know, so often the moment for me is I'm closing their, I've just said goodnight to them, I'm closing their door and they say, Dad, and, and sadly, <laughs> my heart kind of like sinks because I'm like, oh no, they want to talk. <laughs> Just trying to get the door like, quickly closed uh, before you. Uh, quick, you know, because I'm thinking I just want to go and veg out and watch something on Netflix, or I, you know, or I want to get back to a project that I'm busy doing, um, and I have to check my heart and I have to say, no, wait a minute, they are asking for love. That's what they're asking when they say, Dad, Mom, they're asking for love, and I need to say, and that means I need your time. So I, I have to actually stop and say. What What is my main priority on this planet? What is my job? What is the most important thing that I'm about? And it is this moment right here where I choose my child 
over Netflix, where I choose my child <laughs> over myself. That is yeah. what parenting is, putting your children above your own desire to whatever it might be. Um, that, 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 that is parenting. You want to see them go further and far, farther than you've ever gone, but you also want them to have the kind of love, more love than you ever had. You know, just make that your goal. I, I'm just going to make them, I'm going to love them. And so whenever they do that, I say, this is it. This, this is the moment of testing. Mm -hmm. I have to open the door and be willing to lay aside that, that Netflix show, which actually really isn't that big of a sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. It really isn't. I mean, what is there good on, on Netflix? There's nothing <laughs> if you think about it. Your children are so much more interesting. So to allow that opportunity, even though it feels inconvenient, mm -hmm. you do that. You, that speaks volumes to your children and they start to get loved in the way that they need to be loved when they invite you. Whenever you kind of orchestrate something and you say, okay, we're going to go out and have time, they don't often open up because it's on your terms. Yeah. Look for those moments whenever you, whenever it's on their terms. Yeah. Um, okay, great. Let's That's see good. here. Glinda says, love you guys. Thank you so much. Realizing that the child with the greatest need cannot monopolize all of mm -hmm. the parent's time need to be intentional about giving time to the least demanding child too. That's so good. Great. Glenda, Very that good. That is so good. Wow. I think that is, yeah, that is such wisdom. And so much of it is about being intentional. And if we are not intentional in our parenting, if we are not intentional in the time that we spend with each one of our children, then easily that it, that it doesn't, it just doesn't yeah. happen unless we're intentional. So that's so true. And often easily your most demanding child or the one that has the most challenges or potentially difficult behavior is the one that gets the most attention all the time. And you just assume that the others are fine. Yeah. So it's so true. We have to be intentional about engaging and being available for all of our children. Yeah. Um, we have one child that um, doesn't easily just engage with feelings and heartfelt stuff. And, mm. and uh, we... And if you take that child out on a date, it, it work. We love dates. We really recommend make yes. sure you have take a, your kids on dates. Take your children on dates one at a time and have it throughout the year. Try and at least twice a year if you have a lot of children. Um, but if you do a date with her, she won't necessarily open up. Uh, we have to look for other opportunities. And, and Megan's going to talk about. I know that's one of the examples she wanted to give tonight mm. um, with this particular child. Uh, and and it because it also plays into you know we have five children and we often get asked the question how do you actually give quality time to all five of those children maybe you can go ahead and give yeah. us that example and tell us how we tell them how we do that well it's still under what we're talking about being available and I think it's making the most of of every moment really so even in your drives um, which I know as parents we don't love. But those are actually opportunities as well. So when, especially when you have, um, you know, more than two or three children, I mean, even when you just have two or three, it's difficult to get that quality time with each one. So one of our children uh, does gymnastics and we have to drive about 20 minutes um, each way to get there. And I, I try to take those times, those moments with her because I don't get a lot of other quality time with her. So we maximize that moment in the car 20 minutes there, 20 minutes back. I try not to take anybody else with me. And I try, and as I'm driving, I'm actually thinking, okay, because it's easy to actually not say anything and to mm. just sit there and not have to do anything. But I'm thinking, this is my time with her. What, what are the questions that I can ask? And I often start with asking questions that will just kind of open up her heart, yeah. open up conversations. So even stuff like, what is your favorite subject you're doing at the moment or is that still your favorite movie tell me why and we start talking about that as she opens up and starts talking a little bit then I might ask start asking just a little bit deeper questions like how's school going or how how are your friendships who are you enjoying spending time with at school have there been any things that have has anyone gotten upset lately at school what's the drama you know just asking questions and as you start with you know non-threatening questions that just kind of open up their hearts and then being able to have that time. So it's it's really maximizing. And and often those times are there. We just don't realize them. We just need to see them. And sometimes it's actually asking God to help us see. Mm. Show us the moments that we can take with our different children. And um, it makes a, makes a huge, huge difference. Yeah. yeah. Just to t touch on Adam's uh, mention, it's, it's 
think there's a lot there to read. Essentially, though, if you have a chance to read it in your feed there, talks about how, you know, there, there can be different types of parenting depending on the culture. And sometimes what one culture might think is love is not necessarily the way that a parent, another culture would parent and yeah, love their so child. True. I think that's a really good point. I think I think especially there's I, there are certain areas of parenting that I definitely think that applies to like how we protect our children or how we raise our children to um, or empower them to be adults mm -hmm. separate from us and in, in responsibilities. So I mean I I've had the advent or the let me, let me just say the opportunity as it were to grow up in different continents and different places. I spent a lot of, most of my growing up years in West Africa and Ivory Coast and engaging a lot with a lot more traditional African. Of course, we live in South Africa now, in England, in America. I've lived in France. I've lived in a few different places. And um, the one thing that uh, I'd noticed, and when I think back over how African children were parented that I grew up with, there was a lot less overprotecting. There was a lot less helicopter parents. I mean, they, they were allowed to do things that we weren't allowed. And if you now take that child who used to be able to play in, in Africa can play by the streets. Um, they would play in the street. They And they learned how to be very aware of their environment. And they didn't get hit by cars because they grew up around cars just flying on the street or and uh, and able to, to move around with a lot more ease and run around with friends. Um, you now you, you take that into the UK or even into America where everything that, you know, do you protect your child at all costs and they, you know, you don't let them play by the road and they have to be in a seatbelt all the time. And, and the idea of loving your child in terms of protecting your child looks very, very different. Mm. Um, and so that's just one example uh, around the place. And I'm sure we could, if we keep going, we could find all sorts of different ways in which parents think that they're loving your child that are actually culturally different uh, mm -hmm. or culturally uh, what they would do. But I do think quality time is probably one of those things that's universal. I mean, I, I have yet to, I think, meet a person that did not appreciate a father who took the time to be with them. I know that I've had, to, I've been able to disciple lots of people from different cultures. Um, I think about one uh, particular Nigerian um, guy in, in a discipleship group that I was in. And um, he, he spoke about how loving his father was and how it made all the difference. And in this group, there was a, a Zulu, there was a um, uh, someone from an Afrikaans, which is in South Africa, um, a white culture, um, and and I'm trying to remember the difference. There was a an Indian, um, and everybody could resonate. They were. It was like all of these men were saying, "I wish I had a dad like that," mm -hmm. and and many of them didn't have dads like that. And they were all, and we discussed around how fortunate he was and how much it shaped him, how much he loved having a dad that wanted to be with them, that gave him quality time, that spent time with them. And so many people, and in the end, we just said, wow, we, we almost wanted to call his dad up. I remember <laughs> saying, we wish we could call your dad up and just say, well done, he did so good, you know, he's such a, what a great dad. And, um, and he had a wonderful dad, but I, it, was this, it was obvious that we all longed for quality time with mm -hmm. our dad. I think that's a universal thing. I think God's put it in our hearts. It's what draws us to the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. um, so that certainly is, and there are lots of different parenting things. Love, quality time as love, I imagine is pretty consistently across the board what how people mm -hmm. view, view love. Sarah Campbell, what do you say? Let's put that up there. Yes, this is so, so good to pick those moments that we get to be intentional with time with them. So easy to be distracted. Yeah, it is really easy. And it is about being intentional with the long-term goal in mind. What are we building towards? You know, we're not just trying to control moments or control outward behavior. We're trying to shape their yes. hearts, shape their characters for the long haul. And it's actually for legacy. You know, we want to shape our children's exactly. hearts for generations. It's not even just about for them and that they'll have a good destiny and a good life. But it's actually a, a generational thing. We want to impact yeah, very generations good. Very good through memory. our parenting. And this takes time and it takes it takes love through time. 
And it takes being intentional. Exactly. And if we are not intentional, I know in my own life, if I'm not intentional, I actually don't end up doing the very thing that I know I need to do or the very things that I know are the most important things. So here's the challenge this week. Next time you're going to have some quality time with your child, put this away. Put this away. Make sure it's far from you. Engage. Be fully present with your mind and be available. And maybe you can even think right now about, you know, maybe there's a, a, a journey that you take with your child to take mm -hmm. them to whatever sport that they do, soccer class, whatever. How can you ask intentional questions to get to the heart? We find that the, a great question to start off with almost always is just the kind of, what's your favorite? And then fill in the blank. What's, who's your favorite team? You know, And then mm -hmm. after, as they start talking, it opens them up. You can start asking them feeling questions. So how do you feel about soccer? Or how do you feel about and learn to have meaningful quality mm -hmm. engagement? giving time to listen, to connect. And I wish we could do a whole thing on how to listen better. Maybe we can do that coming yeah. up. Uh, there's a lot of ways in which you can really listen well as a parent, and hopefully we can do that. And, of course, we want to get into so many more things. Also around discipline, I know I was kidding about love and discipline. We are going to talk about discipline in the coming weeks, so please keep popping in and seeing us on a Wednesday night. We're going to be doing this for a few more and so we'd love to engage. Thank you so much for all your contributions, Adam and uh, Janice and so many. Don Fundo, thank you so much. Yeah, Sarah, so it, nice we really appreciate it. It's so great to see you on here. And uh, yeah, we're going to be praying for you, Lord. We pray that this would be a fantastic parenting week, that they would be able to fully engage, give time, quality time to mm -hmm. their children. We thank you, God. Bless them, bless their house, bless their children for, for the legacy that you're going to do through each one of them. Yeah. Thank you so much, Janice. Thanks for your encouragement, as always. I love you guys. Please do pop into hardshapeministries.com. Check out the e-courses. By the way, you got to type in Facebook on the e-course to get the 50% off. So don't forget to do that. It's limited. But type in Facebook and you'll get the 50% off of the e-courses if you want to engage. Lots of great material in that. And again, the book. So bless you. Thank you so much. We love you guys. And have a wonderful, wonderful week. Bye. God bless.